Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FPP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it, man. So today I want to share with you something I bought. This is not a sponsored video. I actually uh, bought this myself. A vendor did not send this to me. And that is this little guy. This is a KVM, an IP addressable KVM. If you don't know what KVM is, that's keyboard video mouse. So let's change cameras and take a close look at the device, and then we'll see what it looks like when we access it. Stick with me. Okay, so here is the interface for the KVM. And I'm. we talked about this on Sunday morning, my Sunday morning show. The interface, you can use their app, which will let you access the KVM over the cloud, or you can access it remotely like this over your local network. So here I'm using it over the local network. I'm recording this out in my shop building at the moment, and the device is plugged into my Mac Pro 2013 trash can that's running Linux Mint. So that's what the device is currently connected to, but this is what the interface looks like. So I'm using it in local mode, so I'm going to log in. And I don't have the world's greatest keyboard out here. I need to get a new keyboard. And it will tell you it logged in. And it possibly will tell you no HDMI signal, but that's because the machine had blanked the screen, just jiggle the mouse and it'll come back up. So now I'm going to log into my computer. And now we're logged in. And here is the screen on the PC right now. And I apologize the way the setup is out here, I, the monitors up there and I'm here's the camera. Reasons I don't have a monitor here at the moment. So Anyway, this gives us full access to the computer. We can move the screen around. We can do whatever. If you go up here, here are your settings. You can change the video quality. In a local LAN mode, we could actually set this to a higher quality. And it kind of resets and we get a better screen. And then we can change the orientation of the, of the screen itself. If we're on a monitor for some reason, we want to rotate things around. And of course, our, our resolution and the device will go up to 4K. It's I only use it at HD because that's what I record almost everything in is standard HD. So then here are our device settings and we can get the audio from the remote system. We can get a virtual keyboard to pop up. So if for some reason our local keyboard is not working or whatever, we can use the virtual keyboard. We're using the mouse obviously on the local machine. We also have a local cursor which we can turn off. And then that gets rid of the little weird shadowy cursor thing. But I don't, that doesn't bother me. See, we have two cursors. The black one is our, our cursor and the white one is what is actually on the computer. This has a mouse jiggle feature so that the computer will not lock out or go on the screen. Um, depending on how you have things set up, you may or may not want to do that. I don't care if it blanks the screen, it's no big deal. Our scroll rate, scroll direction standard, this all has to do with the mouse movements. Of course, we can change the language. We can also change to a, a dark background like so. And then of course we can reset the KVM. So those are the basic settings. We have a toolbox that we can copy and paste from local onto the remote device, which is useful. And we can mess with shortcuts and do some other things here that I haven't really fooled with yet. Accessories, if we have any external devices plugged in the machine, we can access our external devices and use them with the remote machine and vice versa, obviously. Virtual media, I don't have any installed, but we could mount, for example, a CD or a file system, a drive, whatever, so that the local machine can access it. This has the ability to copy files back and forth I haven't needed to do that. This is just basically for management of this computer. And then the App Center, and this has a TailScale app specifically for the device, so you can terminate your TailScale VPN on the device. I don't need to do that for various reasons, but it is possible and supported directly by the device, which is pretty cool. And then, of course, the help screen. Over here, we can get rid of the toolbar completely and somehow bring the toolbar back, I hope. Uh, oh, there you go, bring the toolbar back. We can go to full screen, 
here will let us check the firmware for the device and update it directly, which is excellent. Uh, when I got it, there was a firmware update available. I clicked the button and it downloaded the firmware update. Perfectly fine, installed it, rebooted, and I have the newer firmware. Absolutely super simple to use. You can use or not use the cloud service. It is not required to use with this device. When you would want to use the cloud service and the GL iNet app is if you are in a CGNAT situation for real, or for some reason you can't or don't want to run uh, VPN access. So that is an option. So for example, if you're on a work machine and you can't VPN out of your work machine or at some remote site, you can use the app and the cloud service and that will let you get access directly to your machine, again, behind CGNAT if need be, and access your machine like you're sitting there at the keyboard, similar to how we're looking at it right here over the LAN, looks exactly the same. You may not want to go with the super high resolution, but other than that, it's the same. And then uh, we can reboot the device and we can log off of the device. So that is what this thing looks like when you're actually using it. And of course, we can run any apps we need to. We can use, we can go to YouTube, for example. And if I turn on the sound, I could actually get the sound on my remote computer, the one I'm accessing. I said that wrong. I can actually get the sound on my local computer that I'm using to access the remote system. So this is a KVM that is IP addressable. All you need to do is to be able to get to it and GLINet with the cloud service and their app pretty much makes it as easy as, very, as possible to get to this device without you having to set up a VPN beforehand. And if I turn on the sound, we could watch YouTube videos, but we're not gonna do that. So that is it. This gives me full access. Depending on the machine type and how you have this device connected, you can also get BIOS level access to the machine. So I'm on a Mac. If you're on a Windows machine, for example, there's a slightly upgraded version of this that has a PCI uh, Express card that you plug in the machine and that actually powers the device and that gives you the BIOS level access for the device. So if you needed to change something in the BIOS of your computer, you could absolutely do that. And that about covers the major features, other than that is a remote system. Can you do this in software? Yes. Can you do this in software for a lot cheaper than $80 that this thing costs? Sure. You can run VNC, you can run Chrome Remote Desktop. There's a hundred ways to slice and dice this. I like this. It works great in my use case. I don't have to have any extra software. This will work from any web browser. So I don't have to load the components of Chrome Remote Desktop or VNC or whatever. With the cloud service, I can get through CGNAT or access this from wherever I'm at. So that is the usefulness of this device in that use case. Again, I've said this multiple times on various streams. There's a hundred ways to remote access your machine. So there are multiple use cases for this device that I like better, honestly, than some of the software devices. Guys, that's going to about cover it for this video. Once again, this was the GL iNet KVM. I really like the device. I highly recommend it. It has several cases where it would come in very handy in a remote access situation. <clears throat> so if you would, Make sure you give me a thumbs up, share this video with your friends, subscribe if you're not already subscribed and ring the bell. All that's in the little doodly do below. And that will make sure that you get notified whenever I post any new videos. Y'all, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. 73.